Hi everyone and welcome back to part 2 of this painting demo. So just a quick recap, this is the scene that we're doing. Um, you'll just have to ignore the hand gestures, these are clips and footage that's taken from the um, lessons over on my Patreon channel. So I've kind of edited them together for the uh, YouTube video. So that's the scene there that we're going to be painting in today. And there's the drawing as we left it from the last video. All completely finished and taped to the board, ready to go. Um, so I'm just going to start by wetting the whole area with clean water with the soft hake brush. It's a nice soft brush that won't disturb the graphite. And as you probably know by now, once the water goes on there, um, it kind of semi-fixes the graphite. So we don't really get any smudging or any graphite moving around and contaminating the washes or anything like that. So we're getting it nice and wet all over. Now this is where the fun and games start. I had a big mishap just here. Can you see those lines there as I put the paint over? What, <laughs> what that is, they are eraser marks left from the Tombow eraser. I kind of explained it at the start of the part one video of this where I think I may have been on the last bit of the eraser and the plastic bit was poking through and it's kind of damaged the paper. So a lesson learned the hard way here. Next time I should definitely use the Derwent Soft Art Eraser or equivalent, maybe blue tack or something. As long as I can get those lines erased cleanly um, without damaging the paper, you know, that's all you need to be worried about. But anyway, the colours, uh, there'll be a lot more explanation about that over on Patreon, but this is just Payne's Grey and um, Crimson, Crimson Elizabeth. And at this point, as I put the sky in, I'm thinking, okay, that's it it's a write-off, end of video, end of you know the drawing, that's it, there's not, not really much I can do with this. Um, but I decided to carry on anyway and just make this a lesson. Um, and then I sort of hit on an idea of how I might be able to repair this. So I just kept going, applying the washes. I was kind of hoping that maybe it would dry okay, but it, it didn't appear to be, so um, you know what's happening, the pigments gathering in the damaged paper there where it's kind of grazed and it's going darker. So we decided to get the edge of the clean damp brush, just slightly moist brush, not flooded with water or anything, just you know, just damp. And just very carefully just dab it over the lines just to see what happens. I mean we've got nothing to lose, you know, the pitch is ruined, so you know we might as well have a go. And it appeared to be working, but as fast as I was lifting the paint off, um, the area was filling back in again while it was still wet. But it got to a point where it was just damp enough for me to lift off the pigments without leaving a white mark um, on the paper. And without the pigment running back in to that area and leaving a dark mark. So I just kept at it with the damp brush, just kept wiping it on a piece of tissue at the side of me as well. Um, and I kind of got away with it. I mean, there it is dry. You can just faintly see a few marks. Um, but the camera does a really good job of picking those up. But in real life, you can hardly see it. Um, so I think I just about got away with that. But anyway, lesson learned. So uh, take heed from that. You know, be careful when you're erasing out grid lines and things like that um, on watercolour paper. It doesn't usually happen to me. It has happened in the past, I must admit. But that was being careless, um, using a cheap eraser and rubbing too hard, um, and I damaged the paper. But generally, you won't damage the paper if you're very careful and you use a soft eraser. So, for the trees, I put a light wash of Viridian and Yellow Ochre. And I'm just dropping in Lemon Yellow just on the lighter parts while the paint's still wet. So we get some sort of lighter areas nice soft lighter areas that are all merging in together with the surrounding paint. I'll be building up the the washes in layers and glazes um, several times actually and just being very careful as I go so I can get the colours um, as accurate as, as possible not to the photo but just you know to the image that I have in my mind of what I want the scene to look like. Um, using quite a small brush there, so it's a number six, still using the same colours. Could have used a bigger brush I guess, but I'm kind of using the brush as a pencil. 
I often tend to think about it that way when I'm doing a pencil wash. It just it's kind of a natural thing for me to do. Obviously, because you know, primarily I'm a, um, I'm more used to you know drawing with graphite. So you know, to use a paintbrush like a pencil and kind of shade with it, um, just kind of feels natural to me. I just want to give a quick shout out as well to two watercolor artists that. I've been subscribed to since I came on YouTube and I respect a lot and they're actually friends now and that's um, Dave Usher and Alan Owen. So if you go and check their channels out, um, they both paint in a loose style and I love that loose style, in fact I like all styles of landscape painting. Um, so yeah I want to give them a shout out because Dave often gives me a mention as well. So. Um, I'd like to, you know, return the favour. The two fantastic guys there. I'm privileged to have them as friends, and the two great artists as well. Both got YouTube channels and a Patreon channel, so go and go and check them out. Fantastic. Okay, so I've just put a light glaze over the grass there, and I decided to kind of dab it back a little bit with a tissue because it was looking a bit dark. And now I'm reworking the foreground tree there with another glaze, very similar, very similar colours. In fact, the same colours, <laughs> Viridian and um, Yellow Ochre. Just a bit darker this time. You'll probably notice as well, just there where I was just pointing my finger, I'm trying to keep the bottom edge of that wash nice and wet, or alive as I've heard some people use the term. And what that basically means is, um, if you keep it nice and wet along there, while you're fiddling around on the outer edges, painting all the little leaves in, which is taking a little bit of time, um, that area just there is not going to dry out and you can just keep working it down and almost leaving a bead of paint along the bottom edge of the wash. And that happens naturally because my board is set at about 20-ish degrees or so. Um, so the paint will just gently, just very gently, just run down in that direction and form a little bead along the bottom. And it's nice and easy to keep that, you know, that area nice and wet and just keep working it down um, without it drying out and leaving any hard edges. In this section here now, I'm kind of using the brush again like a pencil and just building up a little bit of texture um, on the trees. I think at this stage as well I added a little bit of burnt umber um, to the Viridian and Yellow Ochre mix. But it's like I said, there'll be a much more detailed explanation of the colours. You'll see me mixing them and the palettes and everything over on Patreon. I think there's four videos, four long videos in fact, to accompany this, um, this video um, over on my Patreon channel. Um, I'll put a link in the description below for Patreon and I'll put one in the end cards as well. And it'd be fantastic to see you over there. It's uh, it's growing quite nicely. We've, we've got a fantastic community of people over there, really friendly, really supportive. We've got some real characters over there as well. <laughs> really have. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll like it over there. So uh, yeah, I'd love to see you over there. So now I'm starting to paint the buildings in. And I'm using an even smaller brush now. I'm using a number two because I've got to get in between all the little bricks and all the little detail there so I'm finding it quite easy you know with the number two and the colours that I'm using for this are light red with a touch of yellow ochre in there and I'm keeping it quite watery so it's almost like a glaze on the white paper um, I do actually go over it again with a second glaze um, later on in the painting but I'd rather start off lightly um, instead of trying to get it all in one go because I can often go wrong doing that, me being me. Um, so I like to build up gradually and slowly and you know take it one step at a time until I actually reach the right colour and tone um, that I think looks right. So that's really, I guess, how I've kind of developed this style of glazing. Um, I do paint in a loose style as well, but I don't often film that. Um, you know, I get all inspired by watching Dave Usher, Alan Owen and Stephen Cronin as well as another artist I like to watch and um, you know some evenings I set up my easel get my hake brush out and the butcher's tray with all the paint splodged on it and just go for it without any drawing sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't um, 
but for the YouTube videos I like to play safe <laughs> and produce some content for you by um, you know taking this approach and building up slowly plus it's a great method for the pencil drawings as well you know for actually painting over your pencil drawings um, you know to build up slowly with light layers because sometimes if you go over a pencil drawing with a thick paint you can lose all the detail um, of the pencil work and it can look quite dull and murky so building up in light washes you know allows for that transparency even if you're using opaque paints um, you know you still get that transparency and you see the detail of the pencil um, showing through so now the shadows I'm just using literally neat cobalt blue because as that sits over the light red again it's in a glaze so we're going to see the light red through it and we're going to get that nice kind of bluey purple shadow colour so just neat cobalt blue was all that was needed for there and for the road I'm using a mix of light red and cobalt blue and I'm kind of wetting the, the centre area there and letting the paint um, sort of merge into the centre area there where it looks a little bit lighter still using the number 6 brush for that just using some clean water just to feather the edges out so it diffuses nicely into that light area right so it's time to paint in the foreground and the path so I started by wetting the area all over and then with a weak mix of oh what was it <laughs> well it was a little bit of um, yellow ochre with dear, what was it cobalt blue that's right and um, just very weak it was like a very sort of dull olive color and I just you know just put that in around the sides and just let the, the paint kind of run into the wet areas and just diffuse out nicely um, and I strengthened it up a little bit with um, some more cobalt blue etc and um, just a very pale wash that was all that needed just for um, a first attempt um, so we've got that dark shadow to go across the foreground and um, I need just to warm that up a little bit more as well which I'll just do in a minute just going to put a few more um, washes on the grass there right okay so time for the shadow now when you're doing this you have to be quite brave and try and get it done quickly you don't really want to mess about too much with this um, it can go wrong you know you can get a bit streaky whereas shadows look you know the foreground shadows they do look you know different tones you know as they're falling into little dips into the ground and little high points on the ground and things like that and you can see there I'm kind of leaving gaps in it um, to sort of get that dappled sunlight effect um, but nonetheless I still want you know the painted areas to be nice and smooth so I don't want to play around with it too much and I think I'm just about bordering on doing that now but I got away with it so it, uh, it looked okay so now all I need to do is just strengthen up a little bit um, on some of the grass areas When that's done to help me kind of visualize the picture a little bit bit more it's easier for me to take the masking tape off and see the picture with that white border around it it just kind of helps me assess you know the true colors and the tone and everything and it kind of lets me know what else needs to be done now I needed just to paint these these little fence posts in I'm using titanium white for that on the size 2 brush and as you can see I'm using a magnifying glass there um, you know to try and get everything nice and straight so there's the finished painting hope you like that and i uh, look forward to seeing you over on my patreon channel so thanks very much for viewing take care everybody bye for now